structural modeling made simple. In this session, we will delve into using Procon software for the detailed modeling of a three-dimensional timber truss. Our goal is to not only construct an accurate digital representation of the truss, but also to apply a variety of realistic load cases, analyze their effects, and design each element to meet safety and performance requirements. Once in Procon, navigate to the CAD and Detailing icon, which will give you access to the PADS Detailing program. This tool within Procon enables you to refine the details of your model, providing precise control over the layout, connections, and individual component specifications, ensuring your design is fully documented and ready for construction. In the PADS window, we'll begin by drafting a sample truss, which will serve as the standard cross-sectional truss for our timber roof structure. If you're new to using the PADS detailing program, or if you'd like a refresher on, it, on its detailing tools and features, please refer to our previous instructional videos for a comprehensive guide on creating and detailing models within the PADS environment. These resources will provide valuable insights to help you make the most of this program as we move forward. A link has been provided below for easy navigation to the specific instructional videos. Use this link to access tutorials that will guide you through the PADS detailing program, ensuring you're equipped with the foundational skills needed to create and detail models effectively. When preparing this truss in the PADS program, it's essential to understand that pen numbers play a critical role in defining specific section properties. For instance, if you plan to use 50 by 100 millimeter timber sections for certain elements of your truss, ensure these elements are drawn using a consistent pen number. This practice not only maintains uniformity, but also aligns with Procon's color coding system, where each pen number is associated with a specific color, allowing for easy identification and differentiation of various elements within the model. To enhance visualization, we will dimension the sample truss as follows. Span and height. Define overall span and height for the truss layout. Member lengths. Specify lengths of each truss member, including cords and braces. Section sizes. Label timber sections, e.g. 50 by 100 millimeters, using consistent pen numbers for uniformity. Connection points. Mark joint locations to clarify assembly and load paths. These dimensions will ensure clear and accurate representation, aiding in easy interpretation and construction. We'll now use the MG macro generate command to export the upper layout to the frame module, enabling us to proceed with analysis and design in Procon's structural environment. With the dimensioning complete, we now have two truss layouts. One, lower layout. This serves as a visual reference, helping us review and refine the truss configuration. Two, upper layout. This is the actual template for export. After exporting the truss template to the Procon frame analysis window, the next step is to open the sections window. Here, you'll select and assign the appropriate section sizes for each truss element from the sections database. Ensure that each member has the correct dimensions and material properties aligned with your design specifications, as this is crucial for accurate load analysis and overall structural integrity. Having assigned the correct section properties to our sample truss, we will now proceed to generate the next set of trusses for our roof. To do this, click on the Generate Move Selected Elements icon located at the top left of the Frame Modeler window. You will then enter the desired spacing for the trusses and specify the additional number of trusses to be generated. This process will create a complete set of trusses spaced appropriately for your roof design. Next, we will navigate back to the sections window to assign the appropriate section for the purlins. We will select 50 by 75 millimeter timber sections for the purlins and apply this dimension across all the roof trusses. This step ensures that the purlins are consistent in size and properly integrated into the overall structural design of the roof.
The next step is to add the roof covering, which we will assume consists of three millimeter thick sheets. To facilitate this, we will create a plane along the roof surface. This plane will serve as a reference to help us accurately place the steel sheets on the roof, ensuring they align correctly with the trusses and purlins. Once the plane is established, we can proceed to apply the steel shell elements to complete the roof assembly. Now, navigate to the Input window and proceed to the Add Shell Elements section. Here, select the Quadrilateral Shell tool. Using this tool, you will add the steel shell elements to the roof one by one. Carefully place each shell to ensure they fit properly on the created plane, aligning with the underlying trusses and purlins to form a cohesive roof structure. Repeat the process for the other roof plane by navigating back to the Input window and selecting the Add Shell Elements section again. Use the Quadrilateral Shell tool to add the steel shell elements one by one to the second roof plane. Ensure that each shell aligns properly with the trusses and purlins, maintaining consistency in placement across both roof planes to achieve a uniform roof structure. To add supports, go to the Modeler window and navigate to the Supports tools at the top right corner. Select the Group Add Supports icon, which allows you to add multiple supports simultaneously. Using this tool, place supports at each point where the trusses connect to the ring beam, ensuring the structure is properly supported for load distribution and stability. To apply loading to the roof, navigate to the Input window and select the Add Shell Loads option. Here you can specify and apply different load types, such as dead loads, live loads, and wind loads, directly onto the roof shells. In the respective load cases and combinations windows, define each load case, ensuring that all relevant load combinations are properly set up to reflect realistic conditions on the roof structure. This will enable accurate analysis and design validation for the truss system. With the roof loading completed, the next step is to run the analysis. Navigate to the Analysis tab and initiate the calculation process. This will allow Procon to evaluate the structural behavior of the truss system under the applied loads, providing results on internal forces, deflections, and overall stability. Once the analysis is complete, review the results to ensure that all elements meet the necessary safety and design requirements. To verify that the truss members meet all necessary design requirements, use the Design Links icon to access the Timber Design Link. This tool allows you to review each element's compliance with structural standards. If any member does not satisfy the criteria, return to the Frame Modeler to adjust the section sizes for those elements. After making adjustments, rerun the analysis to check for improvements. Repeat this process as needed until you achieve the most optimal, code-compliant design for the roof structure. Thank you for sticking with us through this tutorial on structural modeling made simple. If you've made it this far, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps support our channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let us know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback. Your support means a lot, and we're excited to bring you more step-by-step -step tutorials and tips. Stay tuned for more content, and we'll see you in the next video.